What's up, everybody? Good afternoon. Hope you guys are doing well. And we as Seahawks fans are mostly thinking about what we might get this offseason, but there's also the element of what we might lose during this offseason, and that's obviously worth exploring as well. And we're starting to see what I think most people expected we would probably see, right? Um, so a couple days ago, we lost Shane Waldron to the Chicago Bears. Again, I don't think Waldron did a bad job here. I think that he did do some things well, and I think he did some things imperfectly, but I think there were some bad circumstances with him, and I was not necessarily upset to see him go, because he probably had to go no matter what, but I would not have been against maybe trying to bring him back in the right circumstance because I don't think he's bad at his job. But um, when you lose somebody like a Shane Waldron to another team, even when it's a lateral move and the team that he's leaving also just fired their head coach, what you will often see is there's a little bit of an exodus to follow that initial hiring. So Waldron goes to Chicago and he's going to want to have a certain degree of control in who is on his staff underneath him in Chicago. Things like quarterback coach, things like tight end coach, things like wide receiver coach. He's going to want at least some of his own guys. And we've seen in the last couple days here that some of those positions are going to be filled by guys that he developed a relationship with in Seattle. So Waldron's gone, but it's also possible that guys like Chad Morton, I believe a uh, assistant special teams coach, uh, Kerry Joseph, an assistant quarterback coach, if I recall correctly, and this is kind of the big one, if any of these are a big one at all, Sanjay Lal, an assistant wide receiver coach, are guys who may follow Waldron to Chicago. Now, none of those guys are huge losses, I don't think. If there is one that is a big loss, it's Sanjay, because he's been a wide receiver coach with us for a while, and he's done good work. Um, I praise Dave Canales for the work he did as the wide receiver coach in Seattle. And um, Sanjay Lal was somebody who was an assistant for a decent chunk of that time as well. And also did great work with DK Metcalf over the last several years. So Sanjay Lal could be a notable loss. But at the end of the day, it is far more likely than not that when you fire a head coach and bring in a new one, that new head coach is going to want to build his own staff anyway, especially if he's an offensive guy. So these guys were probably going to go with the one or two exceptions no matter what. So you've got this going on. By the way, another guy that is supposedly going to consider following Waldron to Chicago is uh, Greg Olson, the uh, quarterback coach who replaced Canales when he went to Tampa Bay. Um, I... Um, I don't know how I feel about that. By the way, it's not that Greg Olson who's in the announcing booth. It's it's a different Greg Olson, obviously. Um, I don't know if he did a bad job last year, but obviously Gino was not as good as he was under Canales, and Canales probably was a better quarterback coach. But uh, I don't know if Greg Olson did a bad job in that role, so maybe he'll be somewhat missed. And this is kind of the uh, issue that you can sometimes run into when you're trying to... Uh, build a team around a defensive first head coach all these offensive guys cycle in and out especially quarterback coaches geno smith's next qb coach may end up being his third in three years he's going to have a different quarterback coach each of his seasons as the full-time seahawks starter that's not ideal that's not what you want so um admittedly there there are some complications there but once you decided to move off of carroll it was likely inevitable we also have one other thing. This is from a Mike Silver on X here. Bengals interviewed former Seahawks offensive line coach Andy Dickerson. So this is another guy who we basically said, hey, if you want to leave, go ahead and leave. Uh, we're, we're changing things up here. So Andy Dickerson looks like he's on the way out as well. Um, he's interviewing for the offensive coordinator job in Cincinnati to replace Bill Callahan. I think he interviewed with the Browns already as well. There was one other team that interviewed with him. So there's a real chance Andy Dickerson's out too. So we are looking at a full-blown coaching staff exodus. And I see some people starting to trip out a little bit about this. I see some people not so comfortable with this. And I can understand why stability feels good, even if it's stability that isn't necessarily great. 
there is something to be said for long-term stability. And I'm not going to act like we necessarily had that. Andy Dickerson was only here for a couple years. Greg Olson was in his first year as the QB coach. But some of these guys have been here for a while. And the fact that they're getting turned over does signal that it is a new day in Seattle. And I do see some people kind of uh, a little bit stressed out about it. But one thing that I just need to repeat here, because this is important, 90% chance a new head coach comes in here, he's going to want to build his own staff anyway, even if the old staff wants to stay. So if you wanted a new head coach, and I know most of you guys did, most of you guys wanted a new head coach, then this is just the price that you pay. And in some regards, I don't even think it's much of a price for most of these guys. Like, like, I don't think Dickerson did a bad job, but we had a terrible offensive line last year. Now, it was mostly injuries, but Dickerson wasn't able to rise above it outside of maybe the first month of the year. So, this is uh, just kind of what happens when you decide to get a new head coach in here and when you decide to uproot a decade and a half of stability. And I want to be very clear about my stance on this, and I think that most of you people have the same stance based on the comments I get and the things that I hear, anything was worth moving on from Pete Carroll. And I do believe that. And I know that sounds mean, and I know some people are gonna like that I, aren't going to like that I said that, but anything that you have to do to move off of Pete Carroll, it was worth it because we needed to do something different. And yeah, there is going to be a little bit of a cost here. There are going to be some players that are not happy about this as well. There might even be a player or two who was planning to stay here, who was going to want out now. Now, maybe that player is a guy like uh, Quandre Diggs, and in that case, I don't really care that much, personally. But the um, point is, when if, you go, if you're going to advocate for a head coaching change, these are the results that you get sometimes. There will probably be more, by the way. There might be some other guys who go as well. Now, obviously, a guy like Clint Hurt, I don't even know if anybody's going to hire him because he's been so bad the last two years. Um, even the very, very positive and optimistic Seahawks fans that you see out there have nothing nice to say about Clint Hurt. Um, BT Jordan would be a loss if he left, I think, because he did a good job this year. He was one of the few guys on defense who I thought did a good job. People would be sad to see Deshaun Shed go because he's a former Seahawk player that became a coach. We always love that. Just be prepared to take some hits here. And some of them are going to sting a little bit. And I do mean a little bit. Nothing that's going to happen here is going to be devastating, I don't think. Because you get down to a certain point on the coaching staff, what's going to be devastating about it? Like, are you ever going to be devastated that you lost your assistant special teams coach or assistant punters coach or assistant defensive line coach? No. Maybe if we lose a guy like Larry Izzo, the special teams guy, that would suck a little bit. A little bit. And who knows if we even lose him. Maybe the new coach will be totally fine keeping the same special teams coach. I don't know. All right, so that's what's going on with the coaching staff. We are seeing an exodus. We are going to have a lot of new faces on the staff this year. Personally, I know it can go wrong, but I'm excited. I want to see what the new guy builds. I want to see what he does. I want to see what he, put, what he puts in place. And I want to see how it works together. And I'm willing to live with some growing pains that are probably going to come with it. But we'll talk more about that after the hires. All right, see you guys later, Go Hawks. Gonna have some more coaching discussion going into tomorrow. See you guys later.